Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 77 here at camp, and I am feeling not as tan as I should be. I know. I'm feeling I'm feeling tropical. I'm feeling like all campers should grab a life vest, a pina colada, and get ready for a trip down the Caribbean memory lane. Yes, the rumors are true. We are back from our cruise that we've been teasing for far too long. And this is going to be a fun episode. I love a cruise episode. We did a cruise episode last year, and it was it was a fun one to recap. Yeah, for sure. I don't remember what episode it was, but I will put it in the show notes. Yeah, and this is a very different very different cruise to recap because we're like, well, the campers don't need to get a play-by-play of like everything we did. But I think we're going to do a little segment called Feral Hog Roundup. Let's describe that. So Feral Hog Roundup is a new segment on the show where we just are going to describe our most feral moments on this vacation. Mm -hmm. I think it's just good to get the context of like what were the most memorable pieces and not what we ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Even though that is quite interesting for a different day. And the weather was not fantastic. So we didn't really have a choice but to be inside the ship and get feral. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. I wouldn't say it was bad the whole time. It was bad a couple days. But yeah, they did contribute to the feral behavior. But I think we should start before we even left Brooklyn. How did this trip start, Jonathan? We didn't know we were getting a snow day. We didn't know we were getting a frozen tundra. Yeah, it was crazy because the week before we left, like there was all these snow warnings in Brooklyn and then nothing happened. And then we go to bed the night before our cruise, we wake up and there is, I would say, four inches of wet snow. You know that heavy, like hard to shovel bitch ass snow? Like that was covered my car, all of the sidewalks, plow trucks, like like the mo- the most snow we've ever had in New York since we've moved here. Yeah, I'm going to flip that on its head and say it was good for making a snowman. Yeah, it feels like the weather, the weather men and women and people, they just never need to be right. They can just show up and do their thing. And I respect that for them because I I like that. It's kind of like our podcast. You don't have to be right. You don't have to be wrong. You just have to present yourself with good energy. So the snow is coming down. We got four inches on the ground. And I'm heading outside with my luggage in hand. And a car's driving by. There's slush everywhere. So I step back, you know, onto the sidewalk. And the car goes out of its way to drive through the slush. And it splashes me. All over my pants, my only pants that I had packed. I'm absolutely soaked. We have to leave in five minutes. Yeah, and it was not It was like also like a salty, wet snow because there was like salt trucks going on. And I think it's crazy because even before you came outside with your luggage, I was already cleaning off the car and people were whipping down the road while people were shoveling. It's like their intention was to splatter people. And that's a special place in hell. For sure. All that to say, we were ready to get the hell out of the city. Yeah. On to promising warmer weather that didn't come for a couple more days. We landed in Orlando. It was pouring rain. Who cares? You're on vacation. No one wants to hear anyone bitch about vacation. So we headed to Universal City Walk, which is like this downtown Disney ass area in Orlando. It's like the bar, it's like the front of the park, but they have a bunch of restaurants. And it's like Jonathan and I's heaven. It's like Bubba Gun Shrimp, uh, Margaritaville. Um, a, a place called Cowfish, which is a combination of a steakhouse and a sushi place. Um, it's just like really kitschy. But we got we went to dinner at um, Margaritaville. It was subpar. Like, what do you expect? But the vibes are high. The food is poor. Like, that's what it is there. No one signs up for gourmet at Margaritaville. And then after that, we headed to this adult karaoke bar, which was it was really cool because I've never been to this kind of karaoke bar that has a live band. Like, you put your little suggestion to sing a song, but there is, like, a four-piece band and three backup singers prepared to sing any one of these 500 songs on the list. It was crazy. I wonder how long the wait was, because we didn't even get to put a song down, but I'm sure the wait was, like, three hours. Well, Kira has this, like, one go-to karaoke song. It's Valerie by Amy Winehouse, and Kira was on the trip, too. So on the trip, it was me and Jonathan, Kira, her husband, Jay, and then our friend, Dez, and her fiancé, Cam. So it was six of us. So, but... Um, Kira always sings Valerie. I think it's like in her register and she sings it every week at her local karaoke bar. So she was like, oh, I'm going to sing it. And she's all gassed up. The second person comes on stage. Guess what song he's singing? Valerie. And Kira's going to listen to this. I hate to tell you this, Kira. 
this man, he really did good. He slayed it. Oh, I mean, he was living too. He was like a professional singer. And that's why we don't talk about the importance of having a backup karaoke song. It's always about what's your karaoke song and not, you know, what's in your artillery. It's also this like fine line of like, how good can you be at karaoke for it to not be fair? Like, because who am I to say that if you're a good singer, you shouldn't do karaoke? It's like, this is your talent and I'm telling you not to do it. But at the same time, I'm telling you not to do it because this is for the common folk. This is for the people who weren't born Celine Dion adjacent. Yeah, like, go on The Voice. Let, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Your karaoke, there's plenty of TV shows. Go audition. Let us people with sub range perform. We've been practicing in the shower for days. I couldn't do that. That was the most advanced karaoke. That doesn't even compare to cruise karaoke because this was like, the, the place was like 300 people deep. Oh, it was a venue. It felt like, you know what it felt like? It felt like House of, House Blues, of Blues, very much Freaky, Freaky Friday, Friday at the mm-hmm. very end. Mm-hmm. Keith, Keith who? Richard's mom. Oh my God. I am jonesing to watch that movie. Maybe we could do that tonight. Well, actually, we're seeing that new Lindsay Lohan movie next week. We'll talk about that oh, next wow. week. We're, we'll circle back on the Lilo and Stitch. So that was all our preliminary feral hog stories. It was just like a wild night. And then we got on the cruise the next day. It was uh, it was stormy weather. But once again, who cares, right? Like you get a free drink. Yeah. You get a piece of pizza and you live your life. Yeah, for sure. Are there any stories that really stick out to you that you'd want to tell the campers about where you're feeling a little feral hoggy well feeling feral is an emotion that i feel like um i do identify with but what i don't identify with was the person that we became on deck 15 when we put down our towels and we became those people who saved a spot at 6 a.m we've been talking shit about them for so long and we were those people i know we put a patreon video out this is so embarrassing the the couple days before the cruise and i bought these really cute like chair clips for your for your towels. They look like um, flamingos and parrots or whatever. Really easy to find on Amazon. Um, link below. I'm just kidding. Um, but <laughs> the first day of the cruise, it was so competitive to get a seat. And there's six of us. You know what I mean? And the next day, we had to make a decision. We woke up. We all looked ourselves in the mirror and said, we are not proud of ourselves, but we will become those people. So at 6.30 in the morning, we all put out chairs and like fake props. I brought like a Hawaiian shirt and I clipped it next to my towel. Jonathan made sure that our display looked lived in so people wouldn't assume because there are signs that say that if you're holding chairs, they have the right to remove like what they like what they perceive as a, per, a, a held chair and move that stuff to the towel station. Right. So we were giving, you know, like, we'll be right back. Oh my God, ran to the bathroom really quick. Got to go wrangle the kids. Kids, just grabbing a meal at the wind jammer real quick. We'll be right back. And I don't think we were back for like a couple hours. Yeah. Like we put the stuff out at 6 30. We were back at 10 30. And, and I'm we're sorry. not proud of that. No, no I'm not, not proud of that. I'm not proud of that, but I paid a lot of money to be there. <clears throat> yeah. And I was gonna have a good time, my friends, okay? Because and I wasn't trying to take prime seating near the pool. Okay, we we're on the upper deck, okay? Fuck off, leave me be. If you have kids, go downstairs. This yeah, is not vi- for you. Visibility was zero percent. We couldn't see shit. We were literally next to the bathroom. I could smell everything that was coming out of there. It wasn't luxurious, but we were still having a good time. We yeah. were doing what we had to do. And you wouldn't believe how busy it is on these decks. Six thirty in the morning. This is a war zone, people. People are trying to fight chairs left and right. We are just a one person in a mix of terrible other people who are also stealing chairs. So if you're gonna judge me, I want you to judge everybody else on that cruise because we were not alone. And I hate myself more than you could ever hate me. And then we did something redeemable. What did we do? We went to the gym. Oh, we did go to the gym. I was being so creepy day one. I really was. I woke up early. I went to the gym day one. That was the day we were supposed to go to Coco K. And the boat couldn't dock because it was too windy. But I'm so annoyed because the the driver of the boat was the captain. Name? I was gonna say pilot. <laughs> captain was like, we have such a like a modern boat. The technology is incredible. We are so prepared to dock in really windy weather, but we can't. And I'm like, wait, all I'm hearing is I can't, I can't, I can't. And I want to hear I can. I'm not getting positivity from him. So while he was trying to dock like in failing at Coco K, I was in the gym doing the treadmill for an hour and I felt good. I felt really good. So the next day I made Jonathan come with me. And what did you think of the gym? It was a little jarring to run on a treadmill where you're not moving anyway. Like treadmills for me kind of throw off my equilibrium. They throw off my pH balance and I'm looking forward, but like the boat's going this way and I'm staying in place this way. It kind of made me a little seasick. We were also rocking to and fro back and forth, if you will. And I had to kind of like focus on the cup holder. So I was just staring down for a full hour. 
Yeah, I was directly behind you the entire hour. And I had no idea you were checking out my ass. How'd it look? I was, well, it looked good, but I was, I was too busy focused on my sweaty elliptical. I was going crazy. I haven't been in a real gym in so long. We have the Peloton here and then I just like walk around the block and Lord knows I need to get back into a real gym, but I've always loved elliptical. And people always make this judgment about elliptical users that it's like not a natural body movement. First of all, what are you, a doctor? Fuck off. If I'm sweating and my heart rate's up, I'm doing something. I don't need your judgment, okay? But um, the gyms on cruise ships are really nice if you're into that kind of stuff. I wouldn't recommend it just because, like, you're on vacation. I was just being creepy. Like, sometimes I'm feeling like a new person, especially on vacation. It's like I'm re-identifying myself. I'm I'm paving a trail, and I'm just being me. So I was I was um, working out for two days, and I gave up. But they do have a juice bar outside of the gym, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and we got juice, baby. We Our bodies need it sometimes. Well, I had to prepare for the beach day. I mean, the pool day. Because the pool days are crazy on the ship because they're gray the water is gray and it doesn't start off gray you guys like if you're up at 6 30 stealing chairs like we are the water is giving crystal blue it's giving it's giving luxurious it's giving tropical but by 1 p.m it's gray and all they're all there is to blame are the children and it's it's the children and it's me i have pissed in the pool this time but you know what pee pooler i'm a pool peer that's just who i am so i can't even get mad the other kids are doing it but like the water turns borderline blue charcoal and I mean that. I did witness a napkin floating by like a little jellyfish. I also witnessed a, a full scoop of pico de gallo. <laughs> Don't know where that came from, but there were diced tomatoes in there too. Like a napkin or a tissue is absolutely feral to see in a pool. A band-aid even. It's just, it's so gross. But... I want to, so how did the pico de gallo get in the pool? I don't know. I feel like somebody was probably just living their best life, maybe eating a burrito too close. Maybe they like forgot something in their pocket. Yeah. Like you live life on the edge and the edge was the pool and living life to the extreme was eating the taco. I, so like you sh- you're allowed to eat a taco in a pool in the privacy of your own home or cabana, but like in a community pool, it's just not okay. And these pools are really small, you guys. Like there's four of them, great, but like they're all like sizes of like, I don't know, like a bedroom. It's not, they're not that big. And there's like a seven year old at any point jumping over you, splashing into the pool. You can't push them, but you can't think about it. <laughs> um, and I, I, I the, see like a child, I will say, so the child is responsible for the gray water. Mm-hmm. That's their, that's their discharge. Well, it's also, <laughs> I'm not sure, but let me, can I finish my statement? I don't think a child is responsible for the pico de gallo. Ch- children do not like pico. And that's one thing I know about kids. That was an adult. And that's someone who needs to be brought to the front of the class and given a spanking. Fast forward to us next year when we're having like poolside mile high nachos. Because, you know, everything we were doing last year, we said we would never do, came to fruition. Yeah. Next year, I'm looking to do an adults only cruise. Yeah. Too many kids. Too many little well, rugrats. It was school vacation week and it's fine. I just like need a little bit more because the only pools for adults are in this thing called the um, solarium, solarium, which is like a big open greenhouse. So I'm just sweating in there. It's so hot in there. Yeah. And I'm trying to catch some rays. Well, you know what's funny about the ship? They had one of those surf machines. Oh, yeah. It's called the Riptide. Mm hmm. And um, my friend Kira's husband, Jay, my friend Jay, he really wanted to do it. So before you can even do it, you have to take a little class. And this is a grown-ass man. And he's taking a class amongst a bunch of children, doing his squats, doing his lunges. He's living his life. So he does it one day. We couldn't watch because we were getting ready for dinner. So the next day, I was like, Jay, I need you to get in line. I need to witness you surf down this crazy surf machine. And the line is crazy long, guys. It probably took him like 45 minutes to get to the front. But we're waiting patiently. We made signs. I made t-shirts. I was bedazzling. I was passing out buttons to everybody that would take one. That didn't happen. Um, He finally is like probably like four away. And this girl gets up. She's probably like, I don't know, 16, 17. She gets on the buggy board. And this girl is, the only way to describe her would be a prodigy. It felt like God plucked her down from the waves of the waves of the Pacific and said, you will be the daughter of the ocean. A modern day Moana, if you will. I was going to say she was giving Soul Surfer Bethany Frankel. Or what? Beth- Beth- Bethany Frankel? Bethany. No. What was her name? Soul Surfer? Bethany something. It's just Soul Surfer. Yeah. Soul Surfer. Call her by her name. Okay. So she was incredible. And then she goes, and I'm like, oh my God, that was a fluke. Everyone sucks at this. Her sister's in line. Mm. Also incredible. Her father, incredible. Her little brother goes, incredible. It was a family. It felt like, going back to the karaoke story, this surf machine seems like it's for amateur hour, okay? Because now we've watched four very talented, classically trained surfers do their damn thing while Jay is two people behind them. 
Timeline wise, though, I do feel like it is important to say by the time that we got to this point, this was the last full day on the ship. So these kids, the mom, the dad, all of those kids, everybody had a chance. They had like seven days to prepare for this. So they could have been, you know, novice to begin with. We were just coming on the last day when everybody had already had a Monday through Friday to to fully prepare for this. Well, they need to take it up professionally because they were that good. I they just felt good. bad for Jake because I'm like, if that was me going for my second day of training and I'm behind Olympic athletes, I would gracefully bow out. But you know what they say. What do they say? Comparison is the thief of joy. E yeah, so they should leave. <laughs> so we don't have to compare. Bye. Yeah, they're putting themselves You're in a place for people to naturally compare it, and I blame them. So stop thieving my joy. Yeah, well, they were really talented. I wasn't going to do that, though, because I know that if I did one of those surf machines, I would just like, like dislocate a shoulder. My fear is less of dislocating a shoulder and more of getting my my bottoms ripped off oh yeah because yeah, that water carries and we watched a couple of kids that happened too yeah and it's and like it's... embarrassing and the one kid started crying and i'm like i i feel that like that would be me well he was nine imagine you 30 it's mm -hmm. like okay i got arrested yeah they'd be like sir public indecency well i would be like i would be tying my bathing suit so tight my bottom legs would be purple oh you would be hourglass baby oh my god cinch me up i'm ready to surf i would wear a one piece with Spanx. <laughs> wait if i'm if i'm cinch and i'm surfing you can call me soul server at one point in the cruise, we're just hanging out, you know, vibing. We've been day drinking the day before. I don't think we were like on one that day at all. It was you early. Were, yeah, it was so early, babe. You and I were making content. I was sitting there. I was reading. And I look at my hand where I felt a little droplet and there's blood. My entire nose turns on like a fucking faucet and I'm just like pouring blood out of my face. There's a group of middle-aged people who are sitting across the way from us who are literally just staring. One of the girls is like whispering. I was like, ma'am, you are like 55 years old. Why are you staring at me and gossiping? I was already self-conscious because of something else that had happened prior, but we'll get to that later. But everybody's staring at me. I'm like, babe, I need, I, I couldn't even move. I had blood on this hand, blood on this hand. I had blood on my lap, on my book. It was a nightmare. So I was like, I need a paper towel. I need a paper towel. Kira thankfully hooked me up with some some napkins. But my nose did not stop bleeding for almost two hours. Now, I'm prone to nosebleeds, but I've never had it that long. Maybe the people across from you were like Cullens. <gasps> oh, and my God. And the breeze was blowing their way. Yeah. And they were like... <gasps> And they're vampires. They could have been. Yeah. And that's what you didn't think of. You're you're over here thinking they're talking shit when they're just trying to control their urges. I really just need to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And like I told Jonathan too, I was like, hey, like I know you're they're like talking about you, but if the person across from me is bleeding all over themselves, I'm also chattering. It's like as two gossip queens, how, who are we to judge another gossip queen? Another gossip girl, if you will. A bunch of Caucasian couples in their mid to late 50s. I'm That's going to be us one day. And I'm not going to stop gossiping in my mid 50s. If I'm that age and I'm gossiping about somebody who's clearly going through it, I can pick up on the vibes. They're clearly incapable. And that's their problem. Well, as you were handling your medical emergencies, I also had a medical emergency that lasted seven days. There's something in that food something it's comical it's unnatural it's it it's it's fighting a war in my stomach the entire time it feels like the trojan soldiers are fighting whoever they fought back then i'm not sure i'm not a historian i'm a comedian okay and all i can say is that i visited every bathroom on that ship at least three times i had my favorites i would wave to the attendants i would say hello it's me again and they'd, they'd open a stall for me and they'd say here's your ruby roses because i was just i basically moved in at that point i was like i was sick the entire time but it wouldn't they get me down you know what i mean also i think the food quality mixed with like the drinking and the drinking was excessive i'm not proud of it we'll talk about it later i i drank too much but did i because it was a drinking baggage and one thing about me i'm gonna find a value and that's what i did but i was just like really like just hurt and my tummy was hurting you're bleeding and i'm and i'm doing something out of my ass so we were not normal it was not normal behavior for it, sure it wasn't normal behavior feral hog behavior well remember what happened at that bar so it's hella windy outside and we're at the little mezzanine, or not the mezzanine, it was the, um, like a courtyard, like a park, essentially. It's outside, you know, open, open breeze. And I had a can of White Claw that I was all set with. So I put it at the end of the bar and I'm standing there ordering my next drink. A gust of wind comes, sweeps up my can, and it blows it directly into the accoutrements 
upside down in the oranges. I was mortified. It gathered gasps from everybody standing there. Basically, the oranges that they were garnishing, my white claw, which was at the end of the bar, I didn't put it near it, had now blown into it. It wasn't your fault. It was the wind's fault. And they like, gathered you put an empty beverage. What were you supposed to do? Babe, the, the look I got from that bartender was it could kill. It could kill. That's when I told you, I was like, I have to go. I literally like, I just, I simply cannot you be here. You had so many moments on this cruise where you were like, had a storm off because you had to go. I had. I did. You had, you had, I can think of three moments where you had to storm off. You're like, I have to leave. I have to leave. If I'm in an uncomfortable situation, I just have to get the fuck out. Yeah, you're flight. You're not I flight. Am, I'm flight. Yeah, exactly. Because how bad, like, that looked really bad. What can I say? What can I do? These people next to me are waiting who get oranges in their drinks, and they're getting a little sprinkle of the bottom of my white claw. That's nasty. I'd be pissed, too. But it wasn't my fault. Yeah, and I think they probably just got more oranges from the back. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, if they kept going, that's really bad. Yeah. So that's when I was like, okay, whose idea was it to come out here? It's windy. Let's go inside. I can't do this. Well, I think our friend Kira, when we were at one of these bars on the ship, she she was drinking a lot. She was going crazy, as we all were. And the thing is with Kira, like, she always wants a shot. It's like, Kira, just have a Michelob Ultra. It's longevity. Let's do, like, a, a marathon. She can't. She's crazy. She's just built different. So we were in this, like, music hall, and the bartender's name began with a J. We'll call her J for now. And she was, like, kept getting drinks from J. And then at one point, Kira orders a drink, and it's Corona after she had, like, three shots. And J gives her a look, and she puts up the Corona with a bottle of water. And Kira's like, okay. Didn't ask for that. Yeah, I calm my ass out. And then afterwards, she got another shot, and the girl reluctantly gives her the shot and goes, just so you know, tomorrow's a really nice port. Implying that Kira would miss the port because she was drinking so much. Mm -hmm. And Kira is just confrontational to the max. So she comes over to me after, she's like, <laughs> I'm like, Kira, she's just doing her job. She can't overserve you. I was like, so you're going to get flagged in the account. Guess what happens the next day? We go to get drinks after our excursion back on the ship, and all of our drinks are half empty. They're only filling her drinks halfway. Paper Girl's getting a Shirley Temple. I'm like, you were literally getting no alcohol in your drinks. They flagged your account because you're being crazy. You need to calm down. So she had one afternoon of being calm, and then they put her account back in the green, and she reinstated. <laughs> she was in the good graces of the seven seas. Yeah, we visited our, that bartender every single day because she was the best, and we loved her so much. And speaking of great employees, there was a we had a really great room attendant. His name was Abraham. He was so sweet. They Those people work so hard. So hard. They're always like, cleaning the rooms for you and making sure you have everything you need and they're just really sweet and they always remember your name no days off either well what happened to abraham that was drama so we walk out of our room and he's usually super friendly asks us what we're up to that day and we just kind of like shoot the shit and we chat with him he's a great guy so we, we talk we walk out and he's like clearly frantic he's on the phone his walkie talkie is going off the hook and he's like leaning against the wall i've never seen this man so upset yeah he was sad he was like stressed he was crying and he goes did you guys have a magnet on your door so the magnets on the doors are like the do not disturb in a hotel and i thought because when we left i said i was like oh did i take it off already because we had a bunch of magnets on the you inside of the it, door yeah. so i was like oh maybe i just took it off and didn't think of it so we walk over to him and apparently in the midst of the night a bunch of kids were running up and down the hallways and taking everybody's do not disturbs off their doors. And at front facing value, you know, that doesn't really seem like that big of an issue, but you know, all it takes is one person to complain that, oh, I didn't want you to come clean my room because I have my do not disturb on the door. And then you disturb them on their vacation. They make one complaint. That person ends up getting fired. I'm not saying that's what happened, but I can understand why he was bugging out because he couldn't tell who had a do not disturb on the door. The entire floor, guys, the entire floor, all of them were stolen. And I'm sure as a kid, I didn't think through his like stupid prank, but I did feel really bad for him because he's like, oh my God, now he's going to get in trouble. So after our cruise, I left him a really great review on the website. Yeah, I did too. That's always important. You have to. You have to. Before we move on, I do want to highlight three more people who made my, sh my trip very special. We didn't even talk about getting off the ship. Well, this kind of includes getting off the ship. Yeah. Three of our drivers that we had on our excursions, mm -hmm. their names were Daisy, Pepito, and Rudy. Now, all three of these people could not be further apart or different in personality and nature. Starting with Daisy, she was an absolute menace. She was so aggressive, borderline mean to us, but she got the job done. We got off and we didn't have an excursion that day because everything kept getting canceled 
on our excursions. Like, Literally. Yeah. We're not going to get into no. our complaint, but almost everything got canceled for us this trip. So we had to like rough it and just not Fend rough for it. ourselves. Yeah. But just like find like a, a like a, a, an island excursion. So that we're looking to like get brought to this beach and this woman grabs us out of nowhere. We're like walking towards these like taxis and she's like, come with me. I need seven people. And there were six of us. And she throws us in her car and um, she drives us to this like big beach with a bunch of other people in the back too. So we knew that we were all in it together. And she was not happy that we were there. She wasn't happy to be working that day. She was texting and driving the entire time through these crazy island streets. She was driving on E. Every single emoji on the dashboard was on. It was like, check engine, low fuel, um, things are about to combust. The steering wheel was falling off, which, you know, I don't judge. My car was like that too. But we're driving like through the treacherous mountains before we get to the beautiful beach. It was yeah. a little scary. On E with the transmission light on. But whatever. She knew her car. She knew her life. But I didn't like the fact that she told us it would be cheaper than what it was and then came up with an excuse at the end being like, oh, it's more money now. It's like. We, yeah, we got that too when we were on our way to the thing. It was like the guy changed changed the rate while we were going. Yeah. It was just, we. I got you in the car. What are you going to do about it? And we obliged. We're like, yeah, you know but what, also when on. I get out, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, it's like, well, please. So she was crazy. Followed by Pepita who picked us up that day. A I different man. Love that name. It's got good bones. Pepito, Pepito, suave, suave, nito. Um, Pepito, Pepito was the best. Um, I was also drunk when I got in his car. He told me I could drink in his vehicle, which I love. I wasn't driving. Get over it. And he was crazy. He told me that um, he doesn't speak Spanish, but he makes love in Spanish. And I thought that was a sweet sentiment. And I'm going to take that with me wherever I go. I still don't quite know what it means, but it's provocative. It's and... so provocative. And I told him that everyone was talking about him on the beach. And he was like, I knew it. <laughs> that why did you say that he was like glowing too he's like they're I, talking about me on the beach again because like, i was being crazy i was performing and so was he oh my god and then he's trying to find a couple more people before we leave obviously we want to fill it up to max capacity before we have him drive across the island so i'm helping him out i'm sitting in the front seat i roll down the window and i'm like taxi 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 anybody want a taxi we get a couple of goosey ganders. We have like four people who come over and guess where they're from, campers? They're from North Carolina. Mm. You know who else is from North Carolina? Charlotte the Pregnant Stingray, a.k.a. Mother Mary. So I'm chatting it up with them who clearly did not want to talk to me. And I'm like, so you guys are from North Carolina. Did you hear about Charlotte? And they're like, no. So I told them that there's this pregnant stingray and they don't know how she got pregnant and that it's practically an immaculate conception. They could not give less of a fuck yeah it was like 2 p.m and they weren't drunk on our level and we were hammered so i'm singing to pepito he's singing back to me jonathan's chatting up the locals aka the people from charlotte um <laughs> North Carolina. local to someone local to somewhere um but yeah pepito was really vibing it out and they were not matching the vibe but i couldn't help myself and last but not least we had rudolph aka rudy rudy was great saint martin is beautiful anyone anyone ever been to saint martin or from saint martin what a gorgeous 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 island my favorite place we visited is cruise just stunning 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 um he was our driver there he was kind of ugh, everyone in the crew everyone on the the van i thought was not giving him his flowers he was packed full of information which i do enjoy i love learning about stuff like that and i feel like no one was paying attention i was being the eager student that was like nodding and smiling at him in the rear view because i thought his information was really interesting did you know that saint martin is owned by two different countries but down the middle there's the french side and then there's the um the, the dutch side the dutch side and we landed on the Dutch side, but we went to the French side, okay? Like, I was learning a lot about St. Martin. And on the French side, you can't gamble. And on the Dutch side, you can't do nude beaches. Mm. So one side, you lose all your money. The other side, you lose all your clothes. That was Rudy's joke. That was Rudy's joke. And and that one got a laugh. That one got a laugh. It did. It got a laugh out of everyone. Oh, but the police were on strike when we were there. So we were about to sit in five hours of traffic. That was stressful. But we didn't. And we made it. Yeah, because Rudy knows the way. And one thing about Rudy, he's going to know the way. I gave him a fat tip. Rudolph is always a leader. Just ask Santa. Yeah, I would take a Rudy over a Daisy any day. So before we wrap up today's conversation, we are going to address the alcohol consumption. It was at an all-time high. And the problem with the cruise ship is that if you do go on your little marker, if you have the beverage package, you can see how many drinks you purchased by just like looking at the transactions and adding how many transactions you had. And we were able to locate how many drinks we had just on the ship, not including our excursions. Oh, we didn't even think about that part. And we're not going to, because we're pretty ashamed, but... And let's hold on. Let's put pause, 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 pause. Campers, this is a judgment-free zone. So if you have something to say, and you're thinking about typing out your comment, I'm uninterested. 
I am beyond uninterested about that. Yeah, because if a doctor asked me how many drinks I consume this week, they would they would say it was alcoholism. And it was. And what about? Yeah, we were on our cruise. And right now, we are we have not touched a drop of alcohol in days. In days. But tonight, we're going out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> should I go first? Yes. The grand I, reveal. How many drinks did you have on The Wonder of the Seas? Yeah, not including Orlando or Atlanta or the okay, excursions. Okay, okay. All right. Keep um, your voice down. On The Wonder of the Seas, I consumed... 86 beverages. And you would think that's a lot. Jonathan. <laughs> dun, 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 How many drinks did you consume on The Wonder of the Seas? 101. But two of them were <laughs> Diet Coke. Two of them were Diet Cokes. Oh my God. Triple digits. Well, also, wait. I wonder if that counts because when we went out to dinner, I signed for everybody. That's what we're going to say. Yeah. You had three over a hundred beverages did i not say this is a judgment free zone i know what i said no, you I'm don't proud. have to re-emphasize Listen, you're, you're underlining it you're highlighting it and yeah. you're and you're striking it and yeah and you know what i'll do i'll strike it and i'll put it in wingdings if i want to okay because that's <laughs> yeah, so it's unreadable yeah it's a code listen there's no there's no listen we're being honest and john didn't even want to talk about this but i was like we have a we have to tell the campers the truth of the matter okay i was having a good time and it does explain a lot of my indigestion yeah and i honestly that's why my that's why my face is bloated right now that's probably why we were having BM issues. What do you think is your peak in your pit, your rose and your thorn of the trip? Should we start with the roses, the peaks? Yeah, let's start with the peaks. Um, I had a lot. I don't want to just say like a relaxing day at the beach because realistically that's what it was. But let's be honest. Sorrento's Pizza, which is the 24-hour pizza, uh, pizza place that is open on the ship on deck five. Don't know how many pizzas they had before we left the dock. Like they are cranking them out constantly and they never ever ran out like i stood there and the guy behind me said can i have that whole pizza and they happily gave it to the man how many pizzas were on the ship i don't know but sorrento's was the place to be it saved me so many times because one thing about me if i don't have a little bite to eat before i go to bed i will be more hungover and more cranky than ever so it's in everybody's best interest for me to eat so my peak my rose is probably going to be sorrento's pizza i loved it there i really enjoyed myself yeah you really weren't hung over this whole trip no and it was because of the pizza yeah probably and also like I, I didn't really get like blackout it was just like a long it was like we would wake up and have a little cocktail at breakfast and then it would just slowly continue mm, true. um yeah what is your what is your peak what is your rose what is your peach my rose is um so i brought everyone and I just think it's really cool that I'm able to do that. And I've I've worked so hard this past year to be able to like um, help out my family and my friends. And I'm like being able to do that and like treat my family and friends to um, just some stuff that I always dreamed of doing. And I love my friends. These are people I've been friends with since sophomore year of high school. We're going on um, almost like 50, we're getting closer to 15 years of friendship. And it was great to be like, to take Kira and Des and to take all of our men, all of our boys, all of our friends, and just be able to go on vacation and just enjoy it and get hammered and have these like really great memories together. So um, just the ability to do that was, I'm so happy I got to do it. What was your thorn? So my thorn was also Sorrento's Pizza. Oh, what happened? So on my birthday, February 18th, 1993. <laughs> we were having a great day. I was having a ball. I was having a blast. I'm waiting in line. The longest line ever. We had just gotten out of a comedy club. And the line, I've never seen it longer. It's like all the way down the Vegas Strip, right? So a ton of people behind us. And there's a phone on the wall. And I'm feeling silly. It's like maybe one in the morning. I'm drunk. It's my fucking birthday. I'm in the middle of the ocean. Got an octopus beneath me somewhere. So I'm feeling silly and crazy. I'm like, let me pretend I'm on the phone. Like, let me take a business call. So I lift the phone. The whole thing comes off the wall. When you lifted the phone, did you grab the phone or the whole unit? The phone. So then it wasn't your fault. No, it was like hanging on there barely. Like I could see the broken pieces of plastic and I know it wasn't me because it was like balancing, but I didn't realize that till after. And then me and camera trying to like put it back and everybody who walks past me, cause I couldn't, I was in the middle of the line. People who were walking past me were like whispering amongst themselves. Multiple people made comments to me about how ridiculous I was acting. And I was like, I got to call it. And I just went to bed. I had to go. I was like, I don't even want my fucking pizza. I need to get the fuck out of here. It was triggering. I was triggered by the way that adults were treating me. I mean, I understand I was acting out of pocket, but had they known it was my fucking birthday, they would probably feel really bad about themselves. True. So that was my pet. What was your pet? Um, my pet was the scrambled eggs. To tell. They're just not eggs. That's comical. That's lab grown. They're wet. They're creepy. 
and they're just scary. Or they're bouncy just, on the teeth. I don't know what that is, what they're serving us, but I think it was the basis of my stomach issues. What did you think of the eggs? Uh, I didn't mind them because in the morning I was just really hungry. So it's like, these are bouncy and crazy. I'm going to eat them. Yeah, almost like gelatiny. But I didn't eat the eggs every day. Well, you know what? Like, if that's the worst part of my my food, that was okay. It yeah. just, there wasn't a lot of bad parts. Honestly, the weather was kind of crappy. Certain things got canceled, but I was with my best friends and you, and it was just perfect. Yeah, so grateful, I had so much fun. Grateful, thankful, and just living. Detoxing. So we did not get into all the details, but if you want to see all the shenanigans and live it along with us, I did vlog the whole thing. It's over 40 minutes and you can watch it right now. Patreon.com slash camp counselors. And it's Kira is so out of pocket the entire time. She's just like barking. But I love it. Can't wait for you to see it. This episode of Camp Counselors is sponsored by BetterHelp. One thing about me, campers, I am one busy bee. If I'm not making videos on the internet, I am editing the podcast. I completely agree. Life is busy. If I'm not brushing out a wig, steaming out a dress, making something creepy on a kitchen gadget, or cleaning up your mess in the mess hall, like the day just gets away from you. So it's really important to prioritize your mental health. Thankfully, there's better help. Think about it, campers. How many hours a day do you spend staring at your phone, trying to pass the time on a For You page or your Instagram? Maybe take an hour for yourself and prioritize your mental health and talk to somebody about what's going on in your life. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Yeah, find your perfect therapist because not every therapist is your therapist, but when you find the one that connects with you, oh my God, is it a kiki? Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com camp to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash camp. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash camp. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements, campers. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like wildfire. Jonathan, do you want to go first? Yes, I do. Okay, this is coming from Unilad, and it is written by Poppy Bilderback. And the title of this article is smell a vision is finally being invented as company works on device. Thank God. I'm ready to scratch and sniff. And it's funny because we always talk about the scratch and sniff Spy Kids 3D. Yep. I think Shrek had one too. Yeah. It, there was like a couple of movies in the early aughts and they just w- would give you like the VHS or the DVD and it would come with a little thing. Or when you went to the theater. I see at the theater. Yeah. They would pass them out there. So now you can have it in your home. Are you ready for this? Yes. An AI-driven device is now on sale, which releases certain scents to match what's going on in your movie or video game. So there's this company, it's called GameScent. So I was like, let me check out this website and like see if they're legit. Let's see what's going on. Because I feel like people have talked about smell vision for a long time. Is it a necessity? No. But is it something that I want in my living room? Absolutely. So according to their website, aptly named GameScent.com, uh, quote, discover the future of entertainment with GameScent, compatible with all gaming consoles and streaming platforms. Powered by AI, our devices release real-time scents that enhance every scene. Did they give you like an example of a movie they're doing right now? I'm like curious. Let me continue reading because it kind of says how, okay. how it breaks it down. Um, so it's not like movie by movie. You don't have to be like, I'm going to go watch Shrek 2. Can I smell an onion? So <laughs> this is kind of how it works, which is actually really cool, but I do foresee some problems happening. So GameScent has released this device, which releases up to six cents currently with more in the works to match the odors of what's surrounded in the game or the movie. The description reads, quote, with our advanced AI, audio from your game or movie is captured and analyzed in real time, determining the most fitting scent for each scene audio is swiftly processed in the cloud it's always the damn cloud game sense ai sifts through the sound pinpointing key cues and events in mere seconds the chosen scent is released through the oh god atomizer i guess syncing perfectly with on-screen events 
So basically, whatever you're watching, it's going to pick up on the audio, transcribe it, and be like, oh, we have that. We'll like shoot that out. It's a, If it's a sound effect of something happening, like a splash, they'll be like, okay, here's a chlorinated pool. You know what I mean? What are the six scents they have? Okay, so the scents currently available are... <laughs> Wet pavement. Gunfire. Explosion. Forest. Storm. Racing cars. Blood. Ocean. Blood? What's it smelling? Pennies? Sp- Sports arena. Well. And fresh cut grass. I think that's more than six. But it's th- giving that's more what, video game based for sure. Yeah. And that's what they're kind of, they, they have six out. I don't know which six, but then they're, they're working on the rest. And they do say that after you're done gaming, you can press a little button and there is a clean air odor neutralizer that is released into the room. So it's not like a lingering scent when you're done. So. Me- Mima's like, why does it smell gunpowder? Yeah. Why does it smell like gunpowder? I think that's like definitely aim towards towards gaming unless you're watching save in private ryan then you're going to get all of those smells all at once so it begs the question what movies would you want to watch because let's be honest we're not gamer girls oh wait we could play um uh, cooking mama what is that game overcooked too we would get those scents that would be fun i would like to watch uh like charlie and the chocolate factory yes yeah it's like a, okay i love the ride soren mm-hmm. disney adult um, they they spray you with oranges. That that's all smell of vision on that 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 ride. Yeah. So they're kind of like taking off like with that idea. I think it's a fun idea. I think it has a long way to go for it to be like crazy. But like, I don't know. I think what if it's stinky? We're watching a stinky movie. Yeah. Well, I guess you you have to purchase the cartridges. Like you're watching cats and it just reeks like a like cat shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Liz, fine. We already have that in this house. So I wrote down a couple of movies. I wrote Ratatouille, but I think that's because of the ride. Yeah, but there's food. That makes sense. That's that that's so smart. Good. That's a smart choice. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You wrote that one down too. I did, and I feel like that one's like. I feel like that's a pretty obvious one, don't you? Okay. Also, we're not going to talk about the Willy Wonka that's going on. I saw people actually were tagging us on Twitter. They're like, "Can't wait to hear people talking about that." This episode's going to age and people are going to have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, but I am the unknown. The other movie I want to smell, Saltburn. Ooh. And that's all I wrote down. So uh, that's Smell-O-Vision coming to a living room towards you. Crazy left turn. I like that. Or maybe something with Shamar Moore because I feel like it would smell like cologne and muscles. Yeah, he is cologne beast mode 24-7. I would like that. Well, I'm excited for the future. Yeah, so that is my story. What have you got for us? My story is titled Cleaner Sacked for Eating Leftover Tuna Sandwiches Takes Legal Action Against City Law Firm. This is a tuna review. No, I'm not going to lie. Exactly. This comes from The Guardian. Um, it was written by Morgan Ofori. So a cleaner is taking legal action at Top City Law Firm for indirect race discrimination after being fired for eating leftover tuna sandwiches from a discarded platter. Gabriela Rodriguez is from Ecuador, cleans the office of Devonshire solicitors for two years. So she's working with United Voices of of the world union and they support migrant workers um claims that she was sacked just before christmas 2023 after contractor total clean received a complaint from devonshire solicitors that leftover sandwiches were not being returned so this cleaner went into a big boardroom meeting that had a lunch that was being served throughout it they all left she's cleaning the room she sees a tuna sandwich that has been confirmed valued at a dollar 50 pounds okay so like nothing and she was like okay my chef's over in like an hour i'm gonna put this in the fridge and i'll take it home the law firm finds it in the fridge tells the cleaning company and the cleaning company fires her which i think is so fucked up for taking a sandwich that i'm sorry sorry got fucked I just feel like if you've ever worked in like a corporate environment, like when I worked at the nonprofit, there's just like so much food waste at these kind of events. And it's like, if the cl- if the event is done and it's all going in the trash, why can't the cleaner just take the sandwich? It, no, it's terrible. It's, it's awful. So in an attempt to get Rodriguez reinstated, dozens of the UVW members of that like of that um, union, including cleaners, legal sector workers, and hospitality workers, protested outside of the Devonshire office on Valentine's Day, bearing 100 cans of tuna, 300 hand-wrapped sandwiches, yes, several helium heart-shaped balloons, and a love letter for Rodriguez. Basically being like, okay, like, let her have her job back. Yeah, we're standing in solidarity, albacore style. Yeah, so Petrus Elia, the general secretary of UVW, said, cleaners are routinely dismissed on trivial, trivial, and we argue, discriminatory grounds like this every day around the country. Many describe feeling treated like dirt that they clean, and Gabriella is one of them. 
we raise our voices and unite to fight any employer, even big, powerful companies like Devonshire solicitors. She then continues saying, and just because we clean their dirt does not mean they can treat us like dirt. Yes. We demand that. respect, dignity, and um, equality, regardless of the language we speak, our country of origin, or the color of our skin. Completely agree. Yeah, and that's so fucked up. So what did this company have to say for themselves? Because I've got a few things I want to take to Yelp. It's kind of a long statement, but basically, like, to sum it up, they're kind of like, hey, like, we got a claim from Devonshire and we handled it the way that we thought was responsible. Like, she stole company property, which is like, it's a dollar fifty-two in a sandwich, like, get fucked. But like, whatever, um, they're basically blaming it on Devonshire. Then Devonshire Solicitors responds back and says, Devonshire did not make a formal complaint against Gabriella and expressly told Total Clean not to take any action against her. Total Clean carried out their own investigation and the decision to dismiss Gabriella was taken without any input or influence from Devonshire whatsoever. Well, here's the thing. There's a paper trail. There were emails that were made. There were phone yes. calls that were made. This is a corporate fucking office. You're lawyers. So if you want to prove your case, prove your case. Otherwise, you're guilty in the eyes of me bitch so it seems like the cleaners are pointing the fingers at the lawyers the lawyers are pointing at the clean and, and gabrielle's out of a job so it's like she's like i don't give a fuck whose finger you're pointing like figure it out someone hire me yeah and there was a lot of discourse on the reddit page not even discourse support of gabriella yeah. being like oh wait, i work in a field very similar or i'm a janitor or like i'm a cleaner and like it just they they're in every industry they're told explicitly not to eat the food if it's done and i just think let's like if it's going to like food waste is a major issue always always right so it's like if they can eat that and they don't care and are we not like, all human beings that yeah like need to eat like what is the issue and it's a tuna sandwich it was probably just like sitting like unwrapped like wrapped up you know what i mean or whatever like well they know they know their truth and they know how to fight a case so it seems like they think they're in the clear they're like hey this wasn't us. This was the cleaning company. And if it was the cleaning company, that's even worse. You know whose case they can't fight? Their own when they're at the pearly gates. Yep. That'll lie on your heart, Devonshire, and and, and total clean. Wait, where is this located? Um, In England. Okay. I knew it because it's a shire. Yeah, they love a shire. Mm -mm. This podcast in Camp Shady Birch stands with Gabriella Rodriguez. We yes, love you, we girly. Do. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little. We tell something to take a hike. What am I telling to take a hike this week? Barn doors on bathrooms. Ooh, a camper out here has a barn door bathroom and their, their, their eyebrows are raised. You know what? I'm not going to get into the aesthetic of it because that's your choice. But functionality wise, let's talk. Oh, agreed. We were in Atlanta. And the hotel room we were staying at had a barn door to the bathroom. Now, a barn door is, it's almost like, what? oh, like a pocket door, but on the outside. For like those, a sliding door. Yeah, it's a sliding door. It's on a little track. Um, you know, people love it in their houses. I, I hate them all around, but you know what? That's your choice. But on a bathroom, this is pretty crazy because the door doesn't close all the way. There is a good one and a half inches between the door and the wall that is open. And you know, the, the veil should never be that thin unless it's all Hallows Eve. Okay. What's spookier than that is everybody who's in the vicinity can hear what's going on. The challenges I'm facing within that bathroom. Mm, the fights you're fighting while Carly Rae Jepsen's blasting at full volume to mask your pain. I have to sit and blast my Carly Rae Jepsen mixtape while running water and smoking a cigarette just to like distract from what's going on because of this fucking barn door. So here's what happened. In our hotel room, we go to leave one day and our front door doesn't close all the way or it closes all the way, but it doesn't lock, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could just push it open and we were about to leave. So we were like, okay, that's an issue. We need to have that handled. Luckily there was a handyman who was around who was helping us fix it, but he had to do like a lot of trips. Like he didn't have everything on him and I, I don't know why he wasn't bringing everything, but that's not my business. And he kept going back and forth and back and forth for like quite some time, like over an hour. So we have to stay in the room. And at one point I'm like, I just, I have to go to the bathroom. And this guy's going to come back at any minute. He had been gone for like maybe 40 minutes. So I take my chances. I'm like, you know what? Let's pinch one out really quick. I'll be done before he gets here. Wrong-o. I sit down. I hear the door open. The man's back in the room. And I text Zach. I'm like, I'm vulnerable. You were vulnerable because the bathroom, the toilet, and the front door could not be any closer. Was it, did you have to hold it? I tried my best. And there's one thing you learn in theater, which is, you know, when you're waiting in the wings, if you can see the audience, the audience can see you. And between that little crack in the door, 
I could see the audience. You locked eyes with him? And the audience could see me. He had to fix the door. He had to fix the door and he he couldn't have gone faster after that. He quickly wrapped it up and he finished and, and he left. All that to say, I don't think barn doors on a bathroom should ever pass inspection. No, I agree because there is a very large gap between the door and and the bathroom. And it's like, okay, a barn door on another room, fine. But like, I need my piece, okay? Like the only thing that's worse than like being in a public restroom where they can see through the crack is being in a barn door bathroom. It's like, okay, I, I need this to be a sealed room that I feel safe in because you're vulnerable. You're like a baby bunny in a field and, and the man fixing the door was a hawk and he saw his prey. Yeah, and I'm all cute and fuzzy down here and he was he was ready to attack. He could see me from all angles, mm. but it makes it, you know, I'm comfortable around you. I fart around you all the time. You, you don't just, stop farting around you, me. My body relaxes. You're just like home for me. But what about those new couples who are going on like a vacation or something and they have to stay in a hotel room or they have to end up in a room where... It's a bedroom and then a barn door bathroom. My heart goes out to those. Yeah, I go to the lobby and shit in the lobby. Yeah, that's why I know Stassi Schroeder when she was dating this guy, Patrick. They lived in New York for some time when she was off the show. And she would literally go down the block to to go to the bathroom because they lived in a small apartment in New York City. Well, that's crazy because for me, when duty calls, duty calls. Yeah, it's Stassi though. So that's my take a hike and I'm sticking to it. Barn doors, take a hike. What are you bitching about? There's a certain type of person on a plane who I absolutely detest. And it's the person who puts their luggage up in the overhead compartment and shuts it before it's full. Mm. It is There's a special place in hell for someone like that. It's how rude can you be to like not care what everybody else has their own bags? Yeah, because visually when a, when a door is closed, it's like, okay, that one's full. I'm not even going to bother checking because there's so many compartments. So if people put two bags in there and there's still room for other people's bags. And it's not like a passing thing. I've noticed this so much in the last year. I've flown more in the last year than I've flown in my entire life. And every flight I get on, I see one guy put his bag up above his chair and then shut it. And then no one's opening them and checking them because they assume they're closed. Or they put one in and they don't put it sideways. They kind of put it in like a weird way where like the next person has to adjust their bag it's like don't be a dickhead let everybody get their bags in nobody wants to check their bag at the gate no who is that person we're all praying that we don't get a pink tag okay it's just one more step we don't have to do but if everybody would just put their bags on their side push them in leave it open until it's full let let the flight attendants close the bins we'd all get on and i hope the people who do that have cold dinner and bad sex for the rest of their life and i mean it and I mean it. And I stand on that. And I'm standing on business. Fuck those bitches. The man kept standing up and getting whatever he needed to out of there and then closing it again. So he wasn't even bashful about it. Nope. He didn't even care. He, he was no boastful. Care of the world. And there was room for at least two more bags in there. Yeah. I'm like, how dare, how dare you, sir? Sick bitch. And then he saw all the people who were struggling to look for, for room. And I was like, should I stand up and open it? But luckily somebody else did. So I didn't yeah, have to do it. Yeah, you were about to intervene because you were getting frustrated like I was. I was. And I wouldn't call myself a hero. Listeners, you can call me a hero no, I'll if call you'd you, like. I'll call you a hero right now. All right. I'm not going to stop you. My Superman. Mm. Cults are everywhere. They don't just live in the walls of Nexium and Scientology. There are sex cults. Self-help cults. Workout cults. Political cults. Even legging cults. And on the podcast, Was I in a Cult? We focus on the brave individuals who have lived through them. I'm Liz Iacuzzi. And I'm Tyler Meesom. Your hosts of Was I in a Cult? Join us each week as we take you through a heroic roller coaster of someone's journey in and out of a cult. With a little levity thrown in because humor is healing and cults are funny. Listen to and follow Was I in a Cult? at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Which for Tyler is at Rite Aid. On tape. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week, campers. Who is getting that silly little Caribbean shirt? <laughs> Who's getting a new patch? Who's getting our love and admiration this week? Who's getting a do not disturb magnet? Ooh, who's getting a pineapple magnet? Jonathan, do you want to go first? Absolutely. My camper crush of the week is my new current obsession, which is a bagel with hummus. A bagel? Now, you love a bagel. I'm going to say it how I'm going to say it, and you can skip forward if you'd like to, but it's it's a bagel. Let me tell you 
how this is made. You ordered us breakfast a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, let me try something new. Let me try something crazy. I forget what it was called on the menu. Something fun. I don't know. Anyway, I ordered it, and it came with hummus on an everything bagel with chopped vegetables. And I was like, this is quite the delight. So then when we were on the cruise one morning, I was like, wait, why don't I DIY this? They have all the ingredients. So let me let me just wing it. So campers, you're welcome in advance for this tutorial. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick a bagel base of our choice. What would you choose? I like regular. Okay, an OG plain. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, I would pick either a plain onion, everything bagel. Um, I like onion too. I don't like everything. There's just too many seeds. I don't know what's going on. They're all in my teeth. For some reason, so I feel like every time I get a toasted everything bagel, it's like burnt. Yeah, well, the seasoning's burning. And, exactly. Yeah. And one thing about me, I like it barely toasted. I like it like gently kissed by Black & Decker. So just like <laughs> very lightly toasted. Gently kissed by Black & Decker. Yeah. And okay. then we're going to take our hummus, flavor of your choice. I just went with a plain hummus because that was what was provided to me thanks to the wind jammer on deck 16. So I put, you know, my, my hummus on there and then we get our vegetables, cucumbers, peppers. If you have them, you can omit the peppers. I feel like it might not need the peppers. Onions, red onions preferred. And then tomatoes, sliced tomatoes. And you're going to cut them up almost like like a chopped salad. Like I love a chopped salad because I like it tiny and like bite size. Like I don't like a salad that I have to struggle and wrangle to get in my mouth. You oh, know? I love a chopped salad for that exact reason because it's it's difficult to eat. So by chopping the toppings on your bagel, you're providing a better experience. Exactly. Exactly. And it is quality control. It's a quality control tip. If you chop them up, each bite is going to be very similar in flavor. Mm. You know, you got to add the the salt, the pepper, the everything bagel seasoning if you're not using an everything bagel and that's your jam. Oh my God. Put the everything bagel seasoning on the hummus. Yeah. And then you close it up and you have yourself a nice little sandwich. You were building that thing like goddamn Picasso himself. Thank you. And I saw the payoff in your eyes. I saw the payoff on the plate. The plate was empty. You licked the plate clean. And I know bagels aren't like great for you. I remember learning. Says who? In Says middle who? school. In middle school, when everybody was pushing the agenda of the food pyramid on us, I remember looking at a chart and they were equating how many carbohydrates were in a bagel. And it said that it was 12 slices of bread, which... I don't think is true, but I remember looking at it on the worksheet and being like, damn, the worst thing I could possibly eat is a bagel or crack. Yeah, exactly. Why they, they're, they're, they're equating crack to bagels. Yeah. And that, you know what? They are crack because they're delicious. And the, <laughs> and the vegetables. And crack is delicious. <laughs> and the vegetables just, you know, really nourish me. And that's what I needed. I needed a little bit of nourishment and I, I loved it. It was a delight. Also, the um the bagels were they weren't thin but they were thinner they weren't like an einstein ass listen don't shame yourself on this podcast for e enjoying a bagel it's just it's it, you're you're allowed to eat bagels you're allowed to eat bread you're allowed to eat whatever you want to eat i'm allowed to do crack yeah well yes um but <laughs> <laughs> But it was good. It was a delight. And I think if you are at the store today, if you're driving right now, a lot of people listen to us on a commute and you're stopping by the store. Maybe do yourself a favor. If that piques your interest, just try it out. It well, it's like a delight. fun new like way to eat a bagel. Yeah. Or you can do a half. Share it with your partner. Share it with your, your son, your daughter, your they, them, your friends. You didn't share it with me. Well, I asked you if you wanted one. I don't remember that it's the conversation. I remember it vividly. I was starving. There was no food available for me. There was like no, one person in the buffet. I remember it in technical. No, I was sick of the wet eggs. I was sick. Well, I was too. That's why I got myself a nice little hummus bagel. You should get one around the corner. That's where we got them from. Oh, so good. So that's what I'm crushing on. What are you crushing on? I'm crushing on the beautiful city of Atlanta, Georgia. All right. Yeah, we flew into Atlanta to do the Cody Rigsby live show. It was so fun, so fantastic. We got there a day early because the cruise ended and your good friend Trish lives in the city. Mm -hmm. And we were dead, you guys. We were absolutely dead from the trip. But I was like, whatever, like... The, well, the worst thing we can do right now is to, like go back to the room and like fall asleep because we, we will not go out again. So we kind of have to hit the ground running. And like to keep in mind, campers, we were in a very touristy area of the city. I know that what we're talking about is not going to be, um, I don't know, a good description of everywhere in Atlanta. But I'm I'm telling you that I enjoyed myself in Atlanta. I think Atlanta is a great place, regardless if I was in a tourist trap or not. I loved it. We were at Pot City Market, <laughs> which is like the biggest tourist trap ever there. But it's like this big, like, um, like mill building that's been converted into like restaurants and shops. It's like a mall market. Yeah, like a mall market, but it's like more industrial. And then attached to that is this thing called the Beltline, which is this 22 mile, like, 
paved um like old train track turned into like running path like walking path all throughout the city and in this area of the belt line there's all these like bars and breweries and and restaurants that are all alongside of it so we got there sunday afternoon there's like hundreds of people on this belt line everybody's laughing people are walking their dogs they're rollerblading they're biking people are singing they're busking they're doing <laughs> they're performance busking. art they were busking cody literally just texted us <laughs> What do you do? But his ears are ringing. Atlanta was just simply alive. Like there was just so many people out enjoying their weekend, drinking, having fun. And I just thought it was amazing. I had a really good time. We stopped at a really cute plant shop slash bar. And you got quite the surprise. Oh my God, you're right. Oh my God, I, I didn't even write this down. Wait, <laughs> it was like, fuck? you have to talk about what this. What the fuck, you guys? So I'm freaking out. Listen, I'm freaking out. We were sitting at this like little table and this woman comes up to me completely intoxicated. She goes, can I ask you something? And I was convinced it was going to be TikTok. I was stopped like 40 times on the cruise ship. And that's just like how it is now. People like always recognize me from the internet. I love it. I'm great. I'm grateful for it. So I'm completely expecting her to be like, are you on TikTok? So I'm like, yeah, you can ask something. She goes, are you straight? <laughs> Guys? Not me being picked up. You sat up straight. Guys, not me being hit on. She goes, my red out. She ain't things you're here. And I was like, oh, honey, I'm gay. She's like, really? First of all, I was wearing a backwards hat. <laughs> you were giving kind of, you were giving bi curious. I was so mask for mask in that moment. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, she turns to John and she goes, are you straight? I'm like, bitch, I'm wearing a pinky ring. The fuck? I could only assume that her friend had to get back out there. She did. And she was like, hey, I'm hammered. It's five o'clock. We started at 11 a.m., but I'm a wingman. I'm a wing girl, and I'm going to be your wing girl for life. Mm -hmm. And I like, you couldn't stop me that day. I was so I was so tired from that cruise, but I was energized. The fact that I was picked up by my woman. You were glowing. You were walking with I a am, little extra pep in your step. I'm thinking is, about it right now, and it was so great. It's ironic because a lot of straight people don't walk with so much pep in their step. But you were glowing. You just I couldn't believe it either. And then we went to leave, and then her other friends then recognized you from TikTok, and the the girl who came in was like mortified, and it was just yeah, like she was like, wait, one of the girls was like, wait, are you on TikTok? And I'm like, now they're gonna pull up my TikTok and show the girl that was trying to like that thought it was cute, and I'm like in a wig, and I'm like. Hey, yeah, your last video was you in the wig on the cruise. I'm like, sorry about that, but that was cool. Um, we went to a place called Del Bar. That was really great. So good. Um, slept in the next day, did the live show with Cody. It was very fun at City Winery. It was great to get on a stage that big and have some fun. But um, yeah, I would love to go back to it and see more. I really wanted to go to the world of Coca-Cola Museum. Oh, fuck. I forgot we didn't even do I that. I didn't forget about it because I was like, if I'm going to go, I want to be like, alert and up and i was just like beat from the day before so. we also had the the door gate like the situation that like we were ready to go out the door and then we just had to step back and i was okay with that yeah we needed time to rest but um any atlanta campers out there like i do think you live in a beautiful city and i want to see more of it and i'm sorry that i only went to tourist traps but like i hate to say this you guys i am a tourist in that city, so... Yeah, I, and I'm ready to be trapped, yeah. Yeah, and I'm ready to be trapped. So take me to World of Coca-Cola, please. One quick thing before we move on. We went to Bully Bar and ordered an espresso margarita thinking it was going to be... Well, I thought it was a, I thought it was going to be an espresso martini with tequila. I did too. That was like, when I read it, when I heard it, when I saw it, I was like, okay, this is... It's going to come out as an espresso martini, but instead of vodka, it's going to be... It's vodka, right? Especially martinis vodka. Yeah. yeah, instead of vodka, it's going to be tequila because yeah. we had that on the Patron trip. No vibes. Out comes a full actual margarita with a shot of espresso in like it. Like the essence of espresso. So it was like acidic in coffee. But like one thing about tequila, it gets me up. Like, if I'm tired, tequila's going to wake me up. So it was espresso. So it was like definitely what I needed in that moment. But like profile taste-wise... Not my favorite. Love that restaurant though. Love that bartender. Yeah. But um that R was a little that was creepy. Was Riley, creepy. her name was. Yeah, Riley. Riley was great. What song's been sucking your head all week? <laughs> Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. The song of the week that's been stuck in our heads. I love my camp song. Do you like your camp song? I love my camp song. As always, the playlist is listed in the episode description as well as the YouTube playlist on Spotify and whatever. It's all free. It's just for fun. So if you want to listen to our other songs, you can find those for free in the episode description. 
Jonathan, what song has been stuck in your head all week? So the song kept coming on on my downloaded playlist while we were on the plane. And I was like, I forgot about this song and I fuck with it heavy. What is it? It is Just a Stranger by Caliutis. Oh, okay. Do you, do you know it? No, I thought you were going to do the... What? I'm drinking rum. Oh, no. Red Bull. Oh, Rum and Red Bull was a song that I was jamming to a lot on the cruise. Yeah. Nobody, not a single person knew it, which I'm surprised. Well, do any of the campers know it? Beanie Man? Probably. Someone out there does. But anyway, we're not talking about Beanie Man. Sorry. We're talking about this song. She wants some hundred dollar bills. She don't want love. She wants some hundred dollar bills. Such a good song. Do you like her? I love Kali Uji's. You know I'm just a fly away. If you want it, we can go by the plane. Her voice is like a ballerina. Yeah, I. Re- she. No one's doing it like her. Mm-mm. She's really in her own lane, aesthetically, musically. I think she's just like the essence of cool. So I started watching a bunch of interviews with her. Because I know her music, but I don't know, like, a lot about her. Uh-huh. So she had actually gotten into music when she was in high school. She played saxophone and piano. But her friends, cool. her family, nobody knew that she was, like, into singing or making her own music. So she, one night, put together 17 songs on a demo track and released it to this website. And it kind of blew up over, like, the course of three days. Her friends really didn't know she did this. And then she had the likes of Tyler, the Creator. ASAP Rocky and Diplo reaching out from this 17 track. So imagine like just being a normal ass teenager, having nothing to do with the industry, not even telling your friends or family that you're really into this or wanting to go on that path. And then like five days later, ASAP Rocky's knocking at your door. And then she ends up, you know, making music with Tyler, the creator. Well, that's that's what a classic case of destiny. Mm, Destiny's Maybe. Child, if you will. Yeah, De- Destiny's Child was actually Caliucci's. <laughs> Um, She also said she doesn't charge for features. She's like, I will, if I support the project, I'm just going to like jump on it and like fuck with it and vibe. Like I'll only do a feature on a song if I'm like fucking with you. And she also- get your bag. I I know. She's so like chill and humble. And it's not really like an in your face humble because you know how sometimes there's people who try to act humble, but they're not. J-Lo. Oop. Oop. This is me. Now. (laughs) Guys, we fucking watch that. I'm not going to get into it. No, but to that get was into weird. It really quick, we watched that movie on Amazon. It was so bad. It was just like, my God, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. And this morning I did watch the the videos of her trying to get her friends in on the project and nobody wanted to do it. Derek Huff was like, I'm in a wedding. She goes, whose wedding? Call them again. I was like, girl, relax. No one wants to go dance. But the, the people she did get were cute. Like Kiki Palmer. That was fun. I love Kiki Palmer. Back to Cali. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. She also said in an interview in 2023, at the end of 2023, like around Christmas, in an interview that um, she was talking about the origin of her name because her name is Carly. Like Ka- I'm saying that wrong, but it's Carly, like K-A- R L I and she changed it because it was like a nickname people gave her but she's like yeah I'm thinking about changing my name and the interviewer was like wait just like this late in the game she's like yeah I just I believe in new beginnings and I just get the vibe from her she just is doing what she wants to do on her terms I don't know I really like her I like that yeah like it's like oh I'm not thinking about it from a strategy point I'm thinking about it because that's what I'm doing it's me not even like a branding thing this is me now. now wait that's caliucci's okay, story good now get 20 million dollars on the phone and let's fund that movie oh i know it'd be good i know it'd be so cool so also her label didn't want her to do like a latin album but she was like well that's inauthentic to myself because that's how i am that's how i speak and that's how i want to make my music and her label was like people aren't going to be into it people aren't going to buy it you have to stick with english and she was like i understand your concern but I don't have the same concern. And she went and she did her damn thing. She's super pregnant right now. She's, she's looking pregnant great. right now? Yeah, she's very pregnant. Um, and she also posted something on her Instagram this morning. It's a video of her doing her tour. And she said, did the second half of my tour pregnant and my unborn child played sold out arena stages. Need I say more? <laughs> Queen. Um, oh, and she's bisexual. And we love that. Oh, so she's the B and the LGBTQ. Yes. And the Q for Queen. Love you. Love that song. What's your song? I also have a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. Clocking in for the the que- the queue for the queers. Um, my song this week is Remember by Becky Hill with David Guetta. Oh, is it Becky Hill or David Guetta? That's it's Becky Hill's okay. song with David Guetta. Okay, so okay, so it's, she's the queer. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if David Guetta's queer. I don't That's what so. I was saying. I was like, wait, is this a mic drop moment? No, um, Becky Hill is English and David Guetta is French. 
that was not our segue. It was just something I wanted to say. Okay. You love Gala. <gasps> you want to say a little bit of the song for me? Yeah. Only when I'm lying when in bed on my own. And I wake up and I don't say a name on my phone. I can't do the rest of it because she's so good. Wait, so guys... This song, if you haven't heard of it, is a song that I genuinely believe in my chest, in my full heart, that every camper is going to like. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, 80 years old, 14. Unborn. Unborn. This is a song that's going to make you get up and shake your ass in a really great way. Like in the car, in your house, cleaning, like anywhere you are. Like this in is the hallway. fun. It's like electronic. It's, candy for the brain. It's dance. It's candy for the brain. I agree. So I don't know how this song kind of came up, but it, it didn't, it, it changed the world on June 18th, 2021. Kind of a newer song, mm -hmm. but it's very much like in that David Guetta kind of realm of music. You can already get the vibe of what I'm talking about. But um, as I said, she is a British gal, and this song has a buildup like none other. It just it really energizes me, and it's a really fun song. Um, so a couple things about Becky Hill, because she's not on my radar. I don't know much about her. Over the hill, if you will. Do you know anything about her? No. I thought she was the girl who was on that Clean Bandit song because it is very similar to to Tears by Clean Bandit, which I'm going to put in my pocket for another day. Yeah, I love. Yeah. And they're very much in that same category of music. Um, So Becky Hill was on season one of The Voice UK. Oh. Arguably, Becky Hill is their biggest person from The Voice. Like a Kelly Clarkson? UK. Did she win? She didn't win. Mm. So she's more of a Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. So it's like... You didn't win, but you like did really well. I think she made it to like the live shows, so she made it pretty far. You know, it was really funny. You know who their 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 um their judges were? Who? Well, guess who her judge was? Guess who her her captain was or whatever what they call coach. What is the voice? UK. The voice so, UK. It's so good that like, you would the die voice for her. UK. The voice UK. Do we just tell you? Yeah. Jesse J. <sighs> and that makes sense. The two of them together. So other than Jesse J, it was also the guy from um the scripts. Like the guy who's in the break even. I forgot about that. Man. And he, not him looking the exact same. But this was a long time ago. And then Will I Am. And then another man I didn't recognize. Um, But no, she she was on there. Their biggest like person ever. Um, It's kind of funny. I was thinking about too. I was like, who from, that's her. Yep. Show me a picture. Thank you. Um, I was trying to figure out like who has been really famous from like the voice in the US. So obviously like um, Melanie Martinez, I always think about. I didn't know Morgan Whalen or Wallen was on the voice. I didn't know that either. I don't listen to him, but like he, he is i know he's popular who is the one from kyle richards that's morgan who oh you're thinking of um morgan you're gonna mic me little you mic you little me yeah what morgan wade i get that see it's that's too many. Too slow. that's too morgan wall and morgan wade like guys some something's gotta give call oh. diane keaton <laughs> <laughs> oh wait you know who also was on the u.s voice who lauren allred oh uh, all right all right all right who is the voice of my favorite song um, from Greatest Showman. Never enough, never, never, never enough for me, for me, for me, for me. Wait, that's gonna sound so good when you That you was know. beautiful. So she in the movie, we're getting off track here, but Lauren Allred in the movie, she wasn't in it. She just did the voice of that character, the girl with the red hair. Oh my God, we got bamboozled. Bamboozled, but it was her and she's on the voice. Fraud. Um, also Cassidy Pope, I remember her. I don't know Cassidy Pope. Well, has. Becky Hill is mm. also a fellow Aquarius, February 14th, <gasps> 1994. V-Day. Right in between us. Wow, we sandwiched her in. Yeah, and I don't know much about her. She's really popular in the UK. This is a great song. Um, and I just think you guys would really love it. I think mm -hmm. both of our songs this week. Yeah, but yours is absolutely candy for the brain. Candy for the brain. Also, um, so the Morgan Wade situation. So I read an article that Morgan Wallens was rumored to be dating Megan Maroney, that other country, the blonde country girl that I like. Oh, you love her. I thought they were talking about, because I wasn't clicking any of the articles. Of course, I'm just reading the text. I thought they were talking about Morgan Wade. So now I go spread the rumor mill that she's a lesbian. <laughs> oh, but it was Morgan Wallen. Yeah, it was Morgan Wallen. And I'm like, why is she singing Tennessee Orange about a man if it's about this girl with tattoos on her neck who's in Beverly Hills? I was so confused. Yeah, those names those are too close. I also just, I'm not really an observant reader. I will read half a word and then assume the rest of it. Well, nine out of ten times, you're probably safe. And this time, karma, I wasn't. Karma got the best of you. Karma had its kiss for me. Do you want to publicly apologize for making that mistake? I would not. 
Okay. And that's on him and that's his prerogative. That's all we have for today's show, campers. Thank you so much for listening. We would greatly appreciate it if you give us five stars and a nice little rating review. We really appreciate it. We do read them sometimes. I always like forget to go read them and then I go read them and I catch up on them. You guys, y'all are so nice. Thank I you know. so much. And I'm going to acknowledge it. Can you guys believe we had our first ad read? <gasps> I know. And it was better help. <laughs> okay. So the show is growing. The show is moving forward. We're so happy to be here. Um, we will see you next week. We'll see you forever. We love you so much. And with that being said, lights out, campers. campers.